And joining us now is Israel's acting consul general in New York, Ido Aharoni. Ido, welcome aboard. Thank you. Why has, has every previous attempt to negotiate some kind of a peace deal between the Palestinians and Israelis failed? Well, you know, in my 20-some years in this business, I learned one thing. The most brilliantly put together agreement can turn out to be a colossal failure on the ground if there's no goodwill. On the other hand, the, the most haphazardly put together agreement uh -huh. can be a great success if there is goodwill. So there's been no goodwill for the last 30 years? Well, I wouldn't, you know, it's more complicated than that. Uh, something very dramatic happened exactly 10 years ago. If you remember, President Clinton convened both sides right. and put forth a very far-reaching compromise, which would have given the Palestinians 97% of all of their territorial yeah. demands. While Israel said no, the Palestinian, well, while Israel said yes, the Palestinians said no, and then waged war against Israeli civilians. Uh -huh. It's important for the viewers to know that about 75% of our 1,500 fatalities and 7,500 casualties at that time were civilians. That convinced the Israeli public that maybe the issue is not about territory, maybe it's about Israel's very right to exist. If this is the issue at hand, it's a whole different ballgame. So the Palestinians have to work very hard while we come to this with great hope, uh, with no preconditions. We understand mm -hmm. that the Palestinians have to work very hard, not to convince me and my colleagues, I'm only a civil servant. They have to convince the Israeli public because Israel is a democracy. Can Israel live with a two-state solution? Well, the Prime Minister made it very clear in his famous Bar Ilan speech uh, that Israel supports the very notion of a two-state solution, but the Palestinians have to understand that two-state solution doesn't mean a Palestinian state and another Palestinian state, and this, is, this seems to be their mindset right now. There is an issue with the settlements. The agreement not to build more settlements in the West Bank is, expires in a month, correct? Prime Minister Netanyahu has said it's not going to be renewed. And isn't, isn't this already making these talks a non-starter? I wouldn't say so, because again, we take this very seriously. The Prime Minister formed a special task force, intra-agency task force, with representatives and the National Security Council, the Foreign Ministry, the Prime Minister's office. He's directing the task force himself. They were prepared thoroughly to those talks. So we take it very seriously. But the issue of settlements, look, the, and I have to say this, the Palestinians' behavior on this issue is rather peculiar. For 11 months, they've been complaining about this moratorium. Um, on further development of existing Jewish communities mm -hmm. in Judea and Samaria. They claimed that it was no good. Now, all of a sudden, it becomes a precondition. So we come to this uh, and we say, we're very serious. This is the ninth inning. It's time for you, the Palestinians, to step up to the plate and deliver the decisions that leaders are expected to make for the well-being of their own people. You know, Iran's president, Ahmadinejad, has weighed in here, and it says you're talking to the wrong party. You should be talking to Hamas. They won the most recent election among the Palestinians. You shouldn't be talking to uh, Mahmoud Abbas. Well, you know, Mahmoud Abbas is the, uh, the only credible partner on the Palestinian side at this point. Hamas is not willing to accept the three benchmarks set by the international community, by the way, not by Israel, to accept Israel's right to exist, to accept all past agreements signed, and, of course, to uh, denounce and renounce terrorism. So as long as Hamas is declining to do all of that um, and is engaged in acts of terrorism, as we just saw in the story that you, uh, that you aired, only in the last 48 hours we had to endure two terrorist attacks. On my way here, I heard of another terrorist attack in Judea and Samaria. Two couples were massacred last night. Seven orphans are left back home. Our heart goes out to the families. Uh, but the Palestinians have to understand that this is the time uh, to make decisions. This is the time to face their own opposition, to fight terrorists, and to stop the demonization of the state of Israel. And one more question, a little, little off track, but I mentioned Iran a moment ago, but why did the Israelis allow the Iranians to actually put nuclear fuel in the reactor they're building? Well, you know, our position on the Iranian issue is well known. We think that Iran poses a threat to the entire international community, not just Israel. It's not just an Israeli issue. But if, it it's, is, if, it's, an, if it's an existential threat for you, because Iran's on track to, be, to become a nuclear power, to have nuclear weapons, if you regard those as an existential threat, why haven't you done what Israel has done in previous cases, where they've actually thwarted the attempts of other nations to build nuclear reactors that can produce bombs? Well, we believe the international community has to play a, a role here and uh, has to present Iran with a united international front. Uh, we cannot have disagreements on the issue of Iran, and I'm glad to say that under the leadership of President Obama, uh, this coalition against uh, nuclear Iran is forming, and, um, and we'll have to wait and see what happens in the future. All right, Ido Aharoni, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.